And welcome back into the morning show. With us this morning, our very special guest, Coach Pat Dye, is with us this morning. We're actually out on location at Southern Accents, and we're so proud to have him with us this morning. Welcome to Coleman. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. I've been here before, though. I was going to say, you've been to Coleman before. Um, you have a lot of friends here. I do have a lot of friends here, and I came up about uh, 15 years ago and bought 12, 15 doors right here at Southern Accents. That's right. I had forgot about that. Everything that Garland's got is just gorgeous, as you know, and people come from all over the country uh, to, to buy his um, uh, items. So Coach Dye, uh, you are one of the most winning coaches in the SEC history. And at Auburn University, he achieved a 71% win rate over 12 seasons. Right. Now, therefore, I, Max A. Townsend, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Coleman and on behalf of the city council and the citizens of Coleman, do this, hereby declare Pat Dye an honorary citizen of the city of Coleman, entitling you to all the rights, privileges, and honors pertaining hereunto. I hereby present Coach Pat Dye with the key to the city. Hey. I want to talk just a little bit this morning. It's such a pleasure to meet you. I have three boys that have been um, Auburn or are Auburn graduates. I was going to say schooled at Auburn. Have a banker, have a doctor, and I have a builder. And War Eagle. I War mean, Eagle. what a wonderful community. I could live there. You've been there for how many years? Thirty-two. Thirty-two years. Yes, ma'am. Twelve years as head coach. What are some of your best memories? Well, you know, when you look back over 32 years, there's been a lot of great ones. Uh, you know, during the 12 years that I was coaching, uh, first of all, it was, it was the greatest moment was the day I I got hired. And uh, do you remember that? Like, absolutely, really yeah, vividly? absolutely, I do. And uh, I had no idea, earthly idea, what Auburn was all about. But after 32 years, uh, it is a unbelievable institution, and and and. You know, the Auburn spirit has never been higher than it is right now, and I think the 84,000 people at the spring game is a, is a strong indication of just how much the Auburn people love Auburn and, and uh, support the school and, and the football team. Absolutely. P particularly coming off of a season like we had last year. Oh, absolutely. Now, I've got to ask this. Do you go to all the games, or do you just watch go, them at I, home? No, no, I go to all the games, you do go to all the games. at home. At home, okay. And, and uh, normally I go and – do what business I got to take care of before the game and the halftime, I go home where I can watch a game. Okay. Because it's, it's too much uh, conversation and too many pictures and too many autographs and all uh, to, to be able to watch a game. And another thing I watch, I look at a football game a little different than the average fan. And, and, uh, and I, don't want, I don't want to talk to anybody when the game's going on. So I end up, I don't want to embarrass myself or anybody else. So I just go home where I can watch it on television. And enjoy. And know what happened when the game's over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that does happen. Well, I've got to ask, everybody's wondering, you know, uh, you're here to sign um, some autographs, but you're also here to talk about uh, Japanese maples, your Quail Hollow uh, Gardens. How in the world did you go from football into something like this? This is, I mean... Japanese well, maples are beautiful. Well, I got my first start? Japanese maple in 1981. My landscape guy said, Coach, you need a specimen tree here. I didn't know what a specimen tree mm -hmm. was. It start with. In it. your he yard? Said, in my yard. Okay. And uh, he brought in a multi trunk green Japanese maple, and I fell in love with that tree over the 12 years that I lived there. I watched it change colors three or four times a year and was just fascinated at the tree. And then when I got retired from coaching, I, uh, I restored a 150-year-old house and had made friends with a guy that had some 40-year-old trees and I started moving them and just, you know, the more I was around them, the more interest I got in them. And then I met one of the real, probably the most well-known <clears throat> Japanese maple guy in the, in the United States was Harold Johnson, was an automobile mechanic, 5'2", about 110 pounds was known all over the world. And he started introducing me into the many varieties of Japanese maples. And that just, you know, and I've just grown from just there. Love it. Yeah, and, and uh, I had a place right behind where I live. It's just a perfect spot for a garden. And it was a, it, and it was a mess. It was growing up in kudzu and all kind of vines and honeysuckle and privet and whatever. 
and I cleaned it up and like I said it was a, just a perfect panorama so I, I developed a Japanese maple garden with a water feature and then the garden led to the nursery and now I'm so I got 7,000 trees. Wow, 7,000 trees. Now, I read an article that said that um, your typical day starts, and tell, let's tell our viewers, because they might not have read that, what you do when you first get up in the morning, and you get out well, of that tractor. Well, I, I, you know, I get up every morning from 4.30 to 5, and I usually at the truck stop at 5, <laughs> 5.30 and read the paper and drink mm -hmm. a cup of coffee and eat breakfast. Right. And I'm back on the farm at uh, 6.30, and. You know, I'll I'll usually I usually work around the in the nursery for hour and a half before my help comes in at eight o'clock, and then when they get there, I get them started, and then I either do what I may have something to do in Auburn or whatever, and right. I tend to all of my busy stuff, and then most of the time in the afternoon I'll get on a skid steer, or a mini excavator, or a bulldozer, and and uh, clearing and cleaning land. Just just working. What you love to do. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. love to do it, and I'm pretty good on it too. Are you good? Yeah, Are well, you good? I'm you know, not surprised. I'm getting well. I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, and and I told I told Nancy, I said, you know, I said, worst comes to worst, I can always get a job making fifteen dollars an hour driving a bulldozer. <laughs> That's right, because you've got all that great experience. Yes. I think this is wonderful that you go from that wonderful career um, to something that you love, that you've learned to love. Well, I told her. Uh, horticulture class that came out to look at the gardens in the nursery and I said you know I coached football for 27 years and I've been developing land and now this garden and nursery right for the, since 92 I don't feel like I've ever worked a day in my life because I've loved every minute of you it. You just had fun haven't well, it you? Just, it, you know it's just a wonderful wonderful life to if you love love what you're doing mm -hmm. and and uh, I love developing the land and uh, I've developed five or six different pieces of property, right. not not with just Japanese maples, but fix them up to country or state for folks that want them from, you know, five six hundred acres down mm -hmm. to 150 acres. See. And I and uh, and one one of them actually is 1,400 acres. Wow! See, so wonderful, wonderful. Um, let's very quickly before we end our show this morning, we want to ask you're working on a book. How did the idea come about to do the book? Well, you know, since I I retired from coaching, and you know I look back and a lot of a lot of st stuff when you when you're so intense and you so driven you get tunnel vision. Yes. And and uh, you and you get away from it. You have a chance to reflect back on all the mistakes you made and some of the things you did right. And and uh, you know it's I'm not I'm <laughs> you know I'm I'm not smart enough to write a book, but you know. I'm 73 years old, and I've had a lot of exposure, and uh, and, you, and I can get it by learn it by osmosis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, so I've been exposed to can. a lot of a lot of stuff, and it, you know, there's a lot of a lot of feeling in the in the book about Auburn, and you know, my time there, and the, and the trustees, and the presidents, and right. the faculty, and the, and uh, you know, the other coaches, and the jobs that they've done when they. You know, all three of the coaches, Terry, Tommy, and Gene, all had an undefeated season. Mm -hmm. I never had an undefeated season, but we won four conference championships. Exactly. And, uh, and of course, Gene won the national championship. But uh, And the thing, the other thing is that I, that I love the institution and what right. it stands for. Mm -hmm. and, and I and, you know, you since Auburn. well, since I've been at Auburn and it came in '81, we've had problems with trustees, we've had problems with administration, we've had problems in the athletic department, we've had problems with the faculty, we had problems in the alumni office. The only place we hadn't had any problems in 32 years is with us students. Same. They have been rock solid. Never, you know, the greatest kids come to Auburn, and the right kind of we kids know. choose to come to Auburn. Absolutely, I agree with that. Tell us what you're, you're you got three going. I've on. got three that already graduated oh, yeah. from there, so a lot of money went to Auburn. All four of mine graduated from Auburn too. See, I'm telling you, and if you've got to understand, if you ever go there and become part of that community, you do want to go back and well, it's, love a, it's it, so. I, you know, I, I grew up in Georgia and went to Georgia, and I coached at Alabama for mm -hmm. nine years, and then I was in North Carolina and some great academic institutions in North Carolina with Duke and Wake Forest and 
North Carolina, North Carolina State. And uh, so I'm familiar with that state. None of them like Auburn. No, they're not. Now, it, it's a, it's a, I don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. You either are part of it or you don't understand it. it you're exactly right. What better <coughs> word? I mean, no better words can be spoken. Books coming out when? When and when can we? Well, get it? it should be out in the middle of uh, October. October. In the fall, okay. Fall. So the, of course this is July. So uh, got make a lot sure of stories in that, and uh, and uh, you know I, t I, I there's some stories in there that I don't know whether I should put in there or not, but I put them in there anyway. I was going to say put them in. There. That <laughs> sounds wonderful. We're so glad that you're Thank in Coleman you. today, and. Um, just thank you for taking the time to speak with us this morning because a lot of folks can't come out this morning and meet you. So thank you for being with us in War Eagle. Right. It's great to be in Coleman. We'll be back right after this.